Okay, so we've got our uh, bones set up in our character, just you know, as, as we saw in the last demo. And um, <clears throat> I've added hands to them and, and all that other good stuff. But one of the first things that we're going to do as part of this is we're going to name all of the bones. Um, and the place to do that is actually pretty simple. Now, I made, I made, I've made some mistakes here, so I, I want to I wanna kind of point something out very specifically. <laughs> I did something yesterday where I would click on the wrist, you know, and I would, and I, and I um, oops, I'm always doing that. Um, I would click on the wrist, and then I was, I was naming it. So I'd go, you know, I'd go forearm uh, dot L. Okay, whoops, period L. That's the way you're supposed to name it. Of course, you're supposed to spell forearm, right? But anyway, and then I would click on this one, and I would go, wait, why is it called forearm? Ah, because you don't name the bone here with the cube. You name it with the bone bu uh, button right here, okay? So this is your armature, okay? When you want to name a bone, you have to name it here with the little bone symbol next to it, okay? So this is my, this is my forearm. Uh, period, capital L, okay? And then this is the hand, capital L. <clears throat> then this is the upper arm, period L. And then here's the shoulder, period L. Now, I'm not going to do all the others for the sake of time, but you get the idea. <clears throat> now, what we want to do is we want to set our inverse kinematics up, and we're going to start with the forearm. However, and this is what I was forgetting, okay, when you add the inverse kinematic um, constraint to the forearm bone, what ends up happening is it's asking you for a target. So let's just go do that. So I have to be in pose mode in order to do that, by the way. So that's also another important thing is you have to be in pose mode to go in and get to this button where you can add the inverse kinematic constraint. <clears throat> and um, you'll notice once it's on, we talked, about the, uh, we talked about this, but when you put it on, you'll see that it's got a little dotted line that goes back to the first bone that you drew. And as this works, you can kind of see that it's affecting the whole thing. But you also notice that here it's asking you for a target. And this is where things get really messed up, because you're supposed to set a target ahead of the object. But if I set it to the hand, the hand is connected to the, at the wrist to the forearm. So if you set the target to a bone that's actually connected, then it, then it gets all messed up because that bone is also part of the whole constraint system. So what we need to do is we need to create a duplicate hand uh, uh, bone that's not in the chain, but is in the same location. So it actually really doesn't take long to do. So I'm just going to right click on the bone here and I'm going to hit, um, I'm just go straight ahead. I'm going to hit Shift and D to duplicate. Oh, you got to do this in edit mode. So I'm going to go back to edit mode here. And you can do this before you add the inverse kinematics to the, to the forearm. I was just kind of showing you what would happen. So Shift D, now I've got this bone there. Now, we're going to place this back in here in just a second, but there's a couple things that we need to do. First, you can see that it's got a dotted line that goes down to the wrist here. That means that this is still a child, essentially, of the forearm. So we need to clear that. So if I go over to the bone tab, <clears throat> you'll see that the parent is listed right down here. I'm going to highlight that, hit the delete key, and then hit return. And now that little dotted line just disappeared. So now this bone is kind of on its own. Um, then the next thing that I want to do is I want to scale this thing, but I want to scale it. Um, if I just hit scale, okay, it scales the length of the bone. But what I want to do is I want to make this more easily uh, uh, grabbable, I guess. It's not really a word, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. Um, I want to make this more easily grabbable. So by making it bigger than the, the bone that's in the hand that is the hand bone, it'll be easy to, to grab onto. If I just keep it the same size right now, it's exactly the same size as the hand bone, 
then you will have problems grabbing on to this duplicate bone. And this is going to be the bone that we want to grab onto to control our IK layer. So what I'm going to do is there's two things I'm going to do. First off, I want to rename it. Because right now it's, rena it's, it's named hand period L period 001. And that's OK, but I want to make it a little easier for me to know what it is. So I'm going to call this hand IK dot L. So I know it's the left hand, and this is the IK controller. Okay, so that, I think that's probably the best way to do it. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the armature um, menu that's down here, and I'm going to go to transform, and I'm going to scale up the envelope of the bone. Okay, so I'm going to scroll back here so you can see. And when I click that, you can see that as I move left and right, okay, it makes it bigger, and I'm going to go even bigger. Control Alt. And you can also go Control Alt S. So Control Alt S. Whoops, stop. And I'm going to make it, you know, pretty big, OK? Now what I'm going to do is because that's a lot bigger, it'll be easier to select. And now I can just kind of throw it back in here. And it might even grab it. Whoops, see, that's the wrong one. See, this is part of the problem. I might even grab it and make it a little shorter, OK? And then bring it back into the middle here so that we have the whole thing. So now I've basically got this duplicate uh, hand uh, bone that's here and it's completely disconnected from everything else and this is where the magic happens so I'm gonna go back into pose mode and just want to make sure that it's kind of in the same place so I'm gonna hit the one key here on the numpad make sure that it's right in the middle there that's that's pretty good bless you um, so now I'm gonna go back into pose mode whoops go back in pose mode right click on the um, the forearm here and go over to the constraint. I've added the IK constraint, but now I need to set the target to the hand. And then all of a sudden, all sorts of magic is going to happen. So I'm going to click here, say my target is the armature, and the bone that I'm going to choose. And this is where the naming comes in really important, OK? Because how could I know which one of those is what, right? So you need to go through the whole skeleton system and name each one. But here, you can see which one I want. Now, if you've got a lot of bones, the other, the other cool thing is you can just start typing. So I know it's the hand IK, so I can just type in H-A-N. Oh, there it is. Click that. Now, notice the forearm changed colors. And I can grab, so I'm going to right click on our duplicate hand. I'm going to hit the G key and grab it. And you can see it's doing some, some strange stuff. Now, part of the problem here is the chain length is too long. So if I right click on our forearm again, you, what you can see is that the chain length is set to zero. And what that means is it's going to go all the way down along the bone to the original, uh, the first bone that you created. So we're just going to set the chain length to one, two. And what that means is it's going to affect one, two bones back, which means it's going to go to the shoulder. So let's try it now. Oh, not too shabby. Okay, so now you, well, now it's the, doing some strange things to my model, but at the same time, you can see the inverse kinematics is working. I might have to fine tune it a little bit, but it is working. Now, the one thing that some people might say is, okay, it's great, but notice that the hand is not following anything. Now, you could go in and rotate the hand, you know, by itself. But what we really want it to do is we want the hand to follow the rotation of our, of our duplicate, our IK hand. And that's actually really easy to do. Um, so let's, I'm going to clear all my poses here. So I'm just going to go to um, Clear Transform All. Or you can just go Alt S, or I mean Alt G and Alt R. But I'm just going to click All. There I go. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to then right click on the hand bone that's right there. Okay. And I'm going to add another constraint, which is copy rotation. And then I'm just going to set the target to the armature and the bone to the hand IK bone that we have there. And now, when I do this, OK, go back to position one, and I grab it, OK? You can see that something's wrong with my object, but the, um, you can see that the, uh, the hand bone is now matched up with the, the new duplicate bone that we've, uh, we've created. 
You know what I think might be wrong is I think I, if I open up the group here, go to my constraints, I'll look at that. I've got two armature uh, modifiers on here. So in the course of all these demos, I've added the armature modifier uh, constraint on here twice. Um, and that's obviously a problem. So what I would probably do, um, let's just see if it works a little better here. Sometimes this, this helps. Um, I'm going to uh, clear, wait. Oh, I'm not in pose mode anymore. That's why. There we go. Pose, trans cl clear transform all. So I get everything back to the way it is. And then I'm going to um, click on my cube. And I'm going to, uh, is it, uh, I think it's Alt P, clear parent. OK? So I'm going to clear the parent and put my cube back out away from the armature. And then I'm going to take my, um, my cube, and I'm just going to subtract the armature modifiers from it. And then we're, let's do this again. So now I'm going to add the armature modifier one more time. Um, armature, there we go. And now I'll control P to add parent with automatic weights. So now my cube is now a child of the armature again. And let's click on the arm. Let's, we're back in pose mode here. So let's see if it works better now. Oh, yeah. Still doing some f interesting stretching. We can talk, we're going to talk a little bit about how to control the bend and stuff like that later. But you can see how now, finally, OK, the, the wrist is at least bending with the, oh, that's an interesting problem. Oh, I wonder how I would get rid of that. Wasn't doing that yesterday when I tested it. Anyway, you'll see that there are some problems that you can start to solve, and we'll deal with those in a different demo. But what's important is now you do have an inverse.